New River Gorge National Park in West Virginia is one of the newest national parks in the United States. This park surrounds the stunning New River whose waters have carved the land around it over thousands of years. The park is full of hikes, viewpoints, waterfalls, and of course the famous New River Bridge, one of the country's tallest bridges. Join me as we spend two days exploring this stunning national park and get caught in a massive storm along the way. Here's all the information on my visit to New River Gorge and let me know what I left off in the comments. I spent the previous night in the town of Beckley and then drove 30 minutes north crossing the New River Gorge Bridge on my way to the Canyon Rim Visitor Center. Today we're in West Virginia at National Park number 47, New River Gorge. Let's go explore. The Visitor Center here had recently gone through a renovation and had lots of great interactive exhibits on the gorge, the people who lived here, and the plant and animal life you'll see. And of course it had a ranger who could answer your questions and some viewpoints out over the gorge and across to the bridge. The main reason to start at this visitor center though is for the two viewpoints that let you see the New River Gorge Bridge from a great vantage point. It's not the nicest day, but that is still an impressive bridge. This is the upper bridge viewpoint, and if you want to see the lower, you got to climb down a whole bunch of stairs. If you decide to head down to the lower viewpoint, note that it's about 175 stairs to get down and then to get back up. I definitely recommend you do it though, as the view from the bottom is even better than the view from the top of this impressive bridge. We have made it down to the bottom really easy on the way down, but I think it's going to be a little tough on the way back up. That is a much better view than the top though. The New River Gorge Bridge is 3,030 feet across. It's the world's longest single span arch bridge outside of China, and it sits at 875 feet above the water below. Prior to when the bridge was built, that was the bridge that crossed this river and it took 45 minutes to drive all the way down to the other side. You can still do this historic drive today, more on that later. After making it up the steps, we drove about five minutes south to the Endless Wall Trail. First thing we're doing is the Endless Wall Trail, which the ranger said was in the most popular trail in the park. She told me to park at the second lot, walk about a half mile along the road, and then start the trail. That way I get the road walking out of the way at the beginning instead of the end. So that's what we're doing. Three miles round trip. Made it to the second parking area, which is full. That was a good idea to get that out of the way at first, because now I just get to enjoy the beautiful trail. Just to show you, this is where we parked. We walked the road, and now we're taking this trail all the way back to the parking lot. The first three quarters of a mile of the Endless Wall Trail go through a rich forest with lots of dense covering and moss-covered branches. I came in late April and I thought everything would be a little bit more green, but it was still a beautiful time to explore and there weren't a lot of people yet since it wasn't the summer. Eventually you'll reach this small bridge that crosses over Fern Creek and it's one of the most beautiful parts of the early portion of the trail. From here the trail starts to head up on switchbacks before it gets to the section known as the Endless Wall that the trail's named after. So there's lots of little offshoots that rock climbers use, especially when they're climbing up the rocks, but they give you great views down to the gorge. But we're going to the main viewpoint right now. This is the main point of interest, Diamond Point Overlook. If you're short on time, you can always just go to the Diamond Point Overlook and then back to the parking area. This is by far the best spot for a view and it gives you an amazing vista over the endless wall. This is the famous view from up here that is the endless wall right there that the trail is named after. It does look like an, an endless wall, that's for sure, stretching out into the distance. You can just barely see the bridge poking out way out there. The best view is going to be from the trail that we do later where we get somewhere over there and we get a great view of the bridge. I spent about 35 minutes up here just having a snack, hanging out, and taking in all of the different views. It really was beautiful. That was an incredible viewpoint, well worth the hike out. If you want, you can just hike back to the other parking lot if that's where you park at, or you can complete the loop, which is what I'm gonna do. From the Diamond Point Overlook back to where I parked, it was about a mile and a half of walking, and it's relatively flat as you're basically just going along the endless wall and popping out whenever you see a viewpoint. As you're doing the hike back, look for these little lookouts along the way. We are actually on the endless wall right now. 
I really loved this trail as it felt like you never knew what was going to come next or what the next viewpoint was going to hold for you. From here you can see more of the wall all the way out to that first viewpoint we were at, which is right here. Again, I wish it would have been a prettier day with more green in the trees, but I can't complain. It was still pretty beautiful. This is the last overlook right next to Climber's Access. There's a lot of climbing access points in this park, and it's cool that they have a ladder here that allows you to easily go down to the base to start your climb. I'm not gonna climb it for you, as that's a long ways down, but feel free to do it if you want. From here, it was about a half mile back to the parking area where I initially left my car. All right, we made it back to the parking area. It took about an hour and a half, and now we're going on to explore more of the park. After leaving, we headed back towards the visitor center and then turned off on Fayette Station Road. This one-way road is eight miles and it takes about 45 minutes to complete. It's historic and it shows you what the route would have been like before the bridge was built in the 1970s. It also allows you to cross under the new bridge and to get some amazing views of it from below. You'll see in a few seconds though that this is about as far as we got before a storm changed our plans. So you can actually walk up underneath the bridge and we're gonna do that tomorrow, which should be pretty incredible. As I was taking some pictures of the bridge from below, I noticed the sky start to get darker and the wind begin to pick up. So I was just right there taking pictures of the bridge and then this wind came up and look at this thunderstorm that just came down on top of me. This is so, so crazy. It came out of nowhere. Wow. It's like shaking my whole car. This is so nuts. It literally came out of nowhere. And it is just, I can't even drive. It's just pouring so crazy right now. I had never experienced a storm like this. And so I sat for a minute to try to figure out what to do. And then I heard a big crash of a tree falling right in front of me. Since it was a one-way road, I had no choice but to head back up, and I stopped traffic and tried to get everybody to turn around to tell them that there was no way to go forward. This was completely dry about 10 minutes ago. Now it is flooding. So I just went to report that the tree was down, the visitor center is out of power, bathrooms aren't working. It's kind of chaos over here now, but uh, it's supposed to end in about an hour, so I'm gonna go into town, see if I can get something to eat and see how it is in about an hour. So yeah, all the town's power is out, so I'm not going to be uh, eating here. I guess I'm going to head south and see what happens. So I'm driving through this small town because the freeway shut down from another tree that fell on it. As you can see, the electricity is still out, but look at that. It's blue skies and sun. This is one of the craziest weather experiences I've ever had. I waited for about 30 minutes and the cars didn't move at all heading south, so I decided to just turn around and explore some more of the national park since it was blue skies again. So I decided to come back up north again and hike the Long Point Trail, which is what I wanted to do. It's a nice sunny day, the ranger said the weather's over. Hopefully by the time I do this three mile trail, I'll be able to drive south. You guys, I cannot get over that weather. I was literally standing there, completely dry, looking up at the bridge, taking some pictures, and within one minute, it was like a waterfall was falling on me with the amount of water that was coming down. I couldn't see to drive, knocked those trees down, even started a few waterfalls on the way back. I don't know if this is normal for the South. This is something I've never experienced before, but wow, I will never forget that. But yeah, this is the Long Point Trail. It's about three and a half miles round trip, relatively flat until you get to the end. About a mile and a quarter in, right along the side of the trail, there were three deer. What's interesting about this trail is that there's basically no views until you get to the very end. The entire way, you're pretty much just walking through a forest. This is our first view we actually got, and look at that, you can see the endless wall right across the way. Eventually we came out on the rock outcropping that led to the famous view of the New River Gorge Bridge. I have to say, that is a, that is a pretty special one. And you can walk basically all the way out to the edge. This is a great view as it's almost head on and it gives you an appreciation for how big the bridge truly is. Bridges are one of my favorite things to photograph and I'm so excited that I got to see this and that I got to see it from this view. 
heading back on the muddy trail to see what else we can explore. I did the hike back quickly and passed a lot of people that had the same idea of trying to get out of the traffic and find a place to hike. As I headed south, the road had opened back up and I was able to make it to my next destination, which was the historic ghost town of Thurmond. When you get off the highway heading towards Thurmond, it's about seven miles on a windy, narrow road to get there. You could see the effects of the storm while I was driving with the raging river, down tree branches, and even small waterfalls along the way. Eventually you'll reach the one-way 827 foot long bridge that was built in the early 1900s and that allows you to access the town by crossing over the new river. About 45 minutes south we made it to Thurmond which is basically a preserved ghost town inside of the park. Grab one of these at the visitor center if you plan to visit Thurmond as it has a lot of information on the different history of the buildings you're going to see here. Thurmond became a town in the 1900s and it was named after the man who settled there in 1844. The town itself experienced a boom in the early 1900s with the amount of coal that was flowing through it from all of the mines around the area. The town had multiple hotels, saloons, and even restaurants and brought in people every single day to visit. As the interest in coal declined, people started to leave the town and search for different revenue streams. If you're into the area's history, it's definitely a spot you wanna see. Other than that, none of the buildings are open. There's not really much inside of any of them. So it's basically just wandering around for a little bit and then heading on. Before I leave, I wanted to come check out what this was though. According to the thing I got at the visitor center, they said this is the Coaling Tower. Today, the National Park Service preserves the town in basically a state of arrested decay. You can walk the main street right along the railroad tracks and you can look into many of the buildings and see pictures of what they used to look like. I don't know if we're gonna get some rain this afternoon, but I'm gonna try to head up to one more thing before we end our first day in this park. I loved the drive out here and felt like that by itself was worth the trip. Then on the way back, I had my window down and I heard a waterfall as I was driving, so I got out to explore. This waterfall was right off the main road and there was a small turnout for one car. After I got back home and researched it, I believe it was called Dunlop Creek Falls. I didn't expect to see anything like this and I was blown away by how impressive and how imposing the waterfall was. I'm sure it was made much more intense by the rain we had just had. I have no idea what that waterfall even is. I just heard it because I had my windows down and that thing is going crazy right now. That was so cool to see. There were more unnamed waterfalls on the side of the road from the recent rain and then we continued south towards our next destination. Another 30 minute drive brought us to the Grandview area of the park which is where we're going to finish our day and there's supposed to be rain in about an hour so I'm going to see how quickly I can get this done. The main overlook is the top spot at Grand View and is what is known as the Grand View. I have to say that is a pretty grand view. It's beautiful to see that bend like that. This is an amazing spot to see in the National Park and it's cool to see the river flowing below you and to see the train track going alongside the river. Plus, as I was there, I saw birds just dancing on the wind in front of me as well. And for our last stop of the day, we're heading out on the Castle Rock Trail. This trail is only about a half mile each way, so a mile round trip. I knew nothing about this trail coming in and the park continued to impress me with the beautiful spots it had to explore. This is certainly a rugged trail. Yep, that's the official trail right there. <laughs> Grandview was originally created as a West Virginia State Park with the Civilian Conservation Corps building the road and the trails that are in use. Because of how popular it got over the years, it actually became part of the National Park Service in 1990. It's easy to see why it became so popular. This is one of the best short trails I have done in a long time. This definitely doesn't seem like the type of trail I would have expected to see in this national park, especially with how rugged it is, and I am loving every minute of it. The trail actually felt like something you'd see in a tropical forest with rugged rock steps, roots climbing all over them, and moss-covered rocks on both sides of you. Many of the rock walls that you see on this trail are probably 40 to 50 feet tall and they're staggering to see. This trail is just so pretty. Every bend is another rock formation. Man, I love it. See how small I am? 
Even though this portion of the trail is only a half mile in length, I probably spent 45 minutes to an hour just walking around and taking in all of the views. I would love to come back and see this in the fall as well. This trail is heading back up to meet with the rim trail. We made it back to the rim trail, which means a half mile back to the car on a not as scenic trail. That Castle Rock portion was the best trail I've done in the park so far. That was so, so, so cool. You should definitely do it. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna go as fast as I can, and that's the end of day one. We'll see you tomorrow. To start my second day in the National Park, I headed over to the Chocolate Moose to grab a breakfast sandwich and a cup of coffee. It's a rainy and cold morning, but we are heading out on the bridge walk, hopefully. I arrived 10 minutes early for my bridge walk tour and there was nobody to check us in, no lights on, and no signs about the tour. Waited here for two hours, no one ever showed up for us and the five other people that were supposed to go on the nine o'clock tour. People came for the 11 o'clock tour and they found out on the Facebook page, I guess, that they canceled all the tours for the day, but nobody told us, so unfortunately we don't get to do the bridge walk and we're gonna head on to a few more things before we end this video. They never told me why the tour was canceled, but I did get refunded and I'm sure it was probably because of the storm the previous day. There were definitely pockets of destruction when we were driving around, and so I'm glad they chose to be safe, and I can always come back and do it in the future. Let me know if you've been in the comments and how it was. From here, I drove about 30 minutes south and actually left the National Park to go to Babcock State Park, as there was something I really wanted to see there. This isn't part of the National Park, but it's one of the most iconic spots in West Virginia. Check out that mill. This is called the Glade Creek Grist Mill, and it's a fully functional replica of the original Cooper's Mill, which once stood here. Even though it's not the original building, it's still incredibly cool to see, sitting right next to the rushing river. You can walk across the bridge from the parking area and walk around the mill itself, and during certain times of the year, you can actually take a tour inside. It's closed for the season, so you can't tour it, but man, it is well worth driving out here to see that iconic and historic spot. Almost heaven, West Virginia. I'm not gonna go on that swing because it's all wet and rainy. Be sure to also walk down the river a little bit more and see the waterfall that's right next to the visitor center. All right, we're heading north and we're gonna stop at one more state park. Man, that crazy storm really wrecked havoc on this area. Driving over here, there was so many downed trees and everything, and then Hawk's Nest Overlook is closed, which was the last thing I was gonna show you. Hopefully we can see Cathedral Falls, and then that will be the end of this video. So if you're looking for more things to do, obviously there's more to do in the National Park, but if you do head north, be sure to stop at Cathedral Falls. Cathedral Falls and Hawks Nest State Park are about 20 minutes north of the New River Gorge Bridge, and they're definitely worth seeing if you have the time. This waterfall had an impressive flow, and it fell about 60 feet down into the small pool below. It was definitely the perfect way for me to end my time in the National Park. And with that, our time at New River Gorge National Park and the surrounding area is done. Hopefully you get to do the bridge walk if you come. Let me know how it is in the comments and let me know if there's anything else that I left off that you love. We'll see you on the next video.